Let's see if we can get on sound, white balance. Good afternoon. My name is Shiori Kanda Mohammed, a cardiovascular ICU nurse at the North Memorial. I currently serve as the first vice president of Minnesota Nurses Association and a steward and an elected MA co chair at North Memorial. On March 14, North Memorial CEO Trevor Swalish announced the elimination of 103 positions, closure of the hospital's NICU, closure of all outpatient mental health services, and reduction of the inpatient psychiatric beds from 26 to 18. 26 nurses from NICU are currently going through the process of layoffs. We, MNA nurses at North Memorial, oppose these cuts because they reduce access to essential services for an already underserved community. North, North Memorial's NICU census has been decreasing in recent years, a direct result of North's decision to grow an upscale mother-baby center in Maple Grove Hospital, an affluent up, uh, counterpart, opened in 2009 and our labor and delivery department has seen a steady decrease in the number of deliveries because of it. As a level one trauma center, we have taken care of many patients, including emergency cases that require both NICU nurses and LMD nurses who are highly skilled in their own specialty. With the loss of NICU, North Memorial will transition to a model in which any baby born that requires emergency, emergent interventions will have to be stabilized without a team of NICU nurses until the baby can be transferred to a NICU hospital. This change will place vulnerable babies at risk along with workers with the lack of experience. We as a healthcare workers are concerned with the reduction of inpatient psychiatric beds because it will lead to an increased number of mental health patients with emergency needs being held for hours to days in a room without a window in an emergency department. In some cases, patients are being discharged without getting psychiatric care that they came in for. We believe that these patients also occupy non-psychiatric beds that would otherwise be used for medical needs. These changes may increase wait time for all patients' admissions, regardless of, psych um, of their diagnosis. Psychiatric nurses strongly feel the reduction of beds is to justify laying off psychologists and other professionals in using less nurses as a money-saving tactic. Eliminating outpatient mental health clinics on the bus line will result in more than 3,400 community members losing access to mental health services in a climate where finding mental health providers is extremely difficult statewide in a particularly vulnerable community with challenges with transportation. We're also a concern about potentially increased incident of workplace and community violence due to mental health patients' needs not being met. Many healthcare workers' assaults are directly related to untreated mental illness. Now we have several speakers here for you today. First is Jim Martinson, a MNA nurse, who will read a statement made by NICU nurses. My name is Jen Martinson. I'm actually a cardiac nurse at North Memorial, but I will be speaking on behalf of the NICU staff here at North Memorial. The senior management at North Memorial made the choice to close the NICU in Robbinsdale on May 25th. The NICU nurses and team in the neonatal intensive care unit have played an important role in deliveries for thousands of preterm and term infants born at North Memorial for over 45 years. If a baby requires resuscitation after delivery, they deserve a highly skilled and experienced team to help during this critical time. Those initial minutes of resuscitation can be very important to promote the best outcome for that infant for years to come. NICU care was essential to my three-month-old son's first hour of life. I was diagnosed with cholestasis of pregnancy in my third trimester a rare liver condition that poses a risk to an unborn child. While I had a more mild case of cholestasis, my doctors still recommended induction of labor four weeks early due to the 
risk of stillbirth. I was reassured by my medical team that we had all taken the necessary steps to have a healthy birth and a healthy baby. However, when the time came, we were all shocked that he needed to be emergently ventilated. Nothing can prepare you for the devastation of seeing your baby take their first breath and then be at death's door. He was whisked away to the NICU down the hallway, and while he was still in the building, nothing could prepare me for, the, for my body's physical reaction to being separated from the baby, my baby in his first moments on earth. Families of babies that received care in our NICU have expressed great concern and sadness about this closure. They have stated that the team of nurses at North are special and wish that others could have a chance to receive exceptional care from the team in the NICU at Robbinsdale. The NICU nurses cared for my husband and me as we spent hours at our son's bedside. Keeping baby and mother together is essential to their health and success. Under normal circumstances, baby is recommended to stay in the room with mom to establish breastfeeding, attunement, and bonding. If a baby is born at North Memorial Robbinsdale and needs NICU after May 25th, there will be no team of NICU nurses to resuscitate that infant. And if the baby is stabilized, they will be transported to another hospital in the metro area. Many families in Robbinsdale's surrounding area rely on public transportation to come to North Robbinsdale, Robbinsdale campus. Not only does this create an access problem for the communities we serve, but also families who have to choose in those first critical days to spend more time at the mother or the baby's bedside. A NICU admission at a different hospital means further rupturing the bond of baby and mother and separating families during, during an incredibly scary time. In North Memorial's Community Health Implementation Plan of 2023 to 2025, they stated, quote, we are committed to focusing on and improving our community's health in the areas of racial disparities in health and life impacting traumas strongly believing that if we focus on these issues, many of the key health indicators will show improvement over time." End quote. How did North Memorial Senior Management decide to make these cuts? What were their options? If North Memorial is struggling financially, is it the patients? Why is it the patients who suffer the consequences? The community around North Memorial Robbinsdale deserves better. They deserve to have a highly qualified labor and delivery department and a highly skilled NICU team that everyone within the hospital and surrounding community have depended on for decades. In the majority of situations, North Memorial, Robbinsdale, and the NICU have been able to keep families together in the same hospital. This all changes after May 25th. Shame on senior management at North Memorial for making cuts to a department that treats some of our most vulnerable individuals. The nurses at North Memorial Robin, Robbinsdale denounced the decision to close the NICU. It's not good for the communities we serve. It's not good for babies. It's not good for mothers and families. It's not good for health outcomes. Corporatized health, health care has a dangerous impact on care and the health of our communities. And that is why we are all speaking out today. Thank you. Jen Martinson, J E N M A R T I N S O N. Thank you. And if the rest of you could do the same, that would be awesome. Next, I'd like to introduce Michaela Price, a MNA nurse, who read a letter we received from the mother of a baby who um, was cared for in the NICU at more. Hello. My name is Michaela Price. I'm a critical care flow pool nurse here at North Memorial. More importantly, I am a North Memorial baby myself being born here almost 30 years ago. And my two boys have had services from the NICU when they were born. I'm speaking on behalf of a NICU mom who did not have, or who has the pleasure of speaking out against these decisions and I read this letter. Hello, my name is Sydney. I had the pleasure of giving birth at North Memorial Hospital in Robbinsdale back in 2022. I originally was supposed to have the baby 
at Maple Grove location because that's where my clinic I was receiving care from. However, I was having complications due to preeclampsia. So I had to be rushed to the nearest hospital at that time, which happened to be Robbinsdale location, North Memorial. My daughter was delivered at 30 weeks and had to spend over a month in the NICU. During my daughter's time in the NICU, she received nothing but outstanding care from both the doctors and the nurses. I was updated every time a test was ran. Anytime there was a change in condition, I was notified. The nurses at this location were so helpful to me and my husband as this was our first child. They loved on our daughter as if she was family. It saddens me to hear this unfortunate situation is happening at this location. The NICU in Robbinsdale is so close to home and I was looking forward to delivering my future children there because of my experience that was nothing short of amazing. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Nate Morrow. He's a, a member of SCIU Healthcare and an EMT at North Memorial Emergency Department who will speak about reduction in inpatient psychiatric beds. Hello, my name is Nathan Mordahl. I am a steward for SCIU, Minnesota and Iowa, Local 113, and I work in the emergency department as a ED tech. I love my work here, and what keeps me clocking in is the community that we serve. My family is here, my friends are here, this is my home. Regarding the cuts at North Memorial, I am speaking out today regarding the 3,400 patients that will be losing their mental health services. This isn't bad for the people who lose care, it isn't just bad for these people and the employees losing their jobs, but it will also add costs, costs and make things worse for the whole hospital and the whole community. These cuts are contra contrary to the core values of North Memorial. We have witnessed our mental health care crisis get worse over the years especially during and after COVID. And any ER worker will tell you this, these moves are shooting, our, we are shooting ourselves in the foot. We need those in power to listen to us. We ran this hospital through COVID and we still run it. We need them to pay attention to us and listen to what we are saying. We know what we're doing. We are sounding the alarm. Please listen to us. Those of us that remain to deal with these, the aftermath of these cuts will see the repercussions in real time. I'd like to close my statement with a quote from Senator Paul Wellstone. We all do better when we all do better. I look forward to North Memorial making the humane decision moving forward for patients and staff. Nathan Mordahl, N-A-T-H-A-N-M-O-R-D-A-L. Next, I'd like to introduce Leah Limerick, a MNA nurse who also works in emergency department. Hi, my name is Leah Limerick, L-E-A-H-L-I-M-R-I-C, and I am a nurse in the ER at North Memorial Hospital here in Robbinsdale. I have a unique perspective on the closures going on within North because it affects me not only as an ER nurse caring for many mental health patients, but as an individual who is losing their mental health care as well. Before hearing the official announcement on the closures throughout North Memorial, I had heard rumors while at work that jobs may be getting cut, but I didn't pay much attention to it, hoping it wouldn't affect me much. Then, at the end of a recent appointment with my psychiatrist, I was informed that the mental health clinic would be closing at the end of August. I have been receiving care through North Memorial for about five years, and for the past two years, I've been meeting with my psychiatrist about every three weeks. The reason for this is because of frequent changes in medications and dosages. It takes a long time to build a trusting relationship with a provider, as well as finding the right treatments and medications for your mental health conditions. 
Finding out I would be losing my psychiatrist and would need to find care somewhere else was an added stressor onto my life and my mental health that I was already struggling to manage. This is the same position that 3,400 patients are finding themselves in. It may seem like finding a new psychiatrist or clinic would be a simple task, but so many people are in need of mental health care right now, especially since COVID, that a patient may wait six months or more before being able to get in for an appointment. Although some patients may be able to start their care with their primary doctor, many primary care providers aren't comfortable prescribing some of the medications required to treat many patients' symptoms and conditions. This delay in or inability to receive preventative and maintenance care often leads to exacerbations of people's mental health conditions, causing them to seek care in the ER. There are days I get to work where half or even two thirds of the ER beds are filled with patients seeking help for a mental illness. Many of these patients need to be admitted to the hospital to ensure they get the correct care and help they need. Which leads us to our next area of cuts in North Memorial, and that is on our inpatient health unit, mental health unit. I've seen people stuck in the ER for 10 days because there are no inpatient beds available within North or the surrounding hospitals. Yet North has decided that this is one of the areas where they should make cuts. Spending 10 days in the ER would put anyone over the edge and people struggling with their mental health are even more vulnerable. Our ER rooms are not a therapeutic environment and were not designed to be occupied by patients long term, nor do we have the resources to care for people in the way they deserve who are experiencing an extended stay. There's no therapy or group activities, patients are confined to their rooms, and ER staff rarely have the ability to leave the floor to bring a patient down to shower or for a walk. The ER nurses and techs do our best to keep these patients busy and comfortable, but it's just not what the ER is designed for. This is why we need all of the inpatient mental health beds we can get, because our patients deserve better. Holding mental health patients in the ER has already been a major issue the past two and a half years since I've been in the ER, and now that we have less inpatient beds, it's only going to get worse. This affects the staff's mental health as well, seeing our patients decline without the appropriate resources or dealing with the escalating behaviors of patients whose conditions are worsening due to not being able to find a bed in a care area where they belong. It is not fair to the staff or the patients for North Memorial to focus its resources on more lucrative areas of medicine or the hospital with a wealthier suburban population. Mental health problems do not discriminate against age, race, or gender, and you may never know which individuals around you are truly struggling. Unfortunately, I've seen patients as young as nine years old coming in for suicidal ideations to the ER. This is not the time to make cuts to any of our mental health resources when truly we should be putting more money into these areas. This community needs us. My name is Bob Colstead, K-O-L-S-T-A-D. I'm a member of the Teamsters Union, and I'm also one of the stewards who represents the lawyers of Hampton County Public Defender's Office. We've always stood with our nurse, our working nurses, sisters, brothers, working siblings, and their struggle for decent working conditions, decent pay, decent staffing levels, and their efforts to, to, to continue to serve their communities adequately. Um, the thing about uh, the community that the nurses here serve is as many of the same people that we serve in the Hennepin County Public Defender's Office. One of the things that comes up often um, in, in part, of, part of my work that I see in all the workers who I, who I work with is that um, um, our clients are often in need of mental health services, right? And people who do not get mental health services when they need them or if they're delayed or they just don't get them at all, they're much more likely to end up in the criminal justice system and then these different health services for them. And a lot of times they end up sitting in jail waiting for a bed to open up. So now is not the time to be closing beds and, and, and diminishing the amount of services that are available to these vulnerable communities that we serve. Um, one of the things I think is important to remember is that justice isn't just about making sure people get a fair trial, that they're treated fairly by the police department, that they're treated fairly by jailers and all the rest. 
Justice also means that people deserve to have a place to live, they have food to eat, and they have adequate access to, 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 to health care. And in particular, mental health or, or medical care related to mental health care is um, one of the most important kinds of services that can be provided because these are the most vulnerable members of our society. So basically what we got here at North Memorial Hospital is the bean counters attacking babies and people with mental health problems or people who need mental health services. And it's not compassionate, it's not just, and it's not something that should be happening to the most vulnerable uh, members of our community. Um, and we stand with the nurses in their struggle to make sure that these, these beds are not lost, that these services are able to be provided to the poor people who live here. And just to add, I mean, many of the people I represent come to this hospital. We see it all the time. So, you know, we're all the same. We're, um, we're in helping professions. We care about our working conditions. We care about our pay. We care about our staffing levels. But most importantly, we care about the people we serve. We serve the same people. We serve vulnerable people. And so North, North Memorial needs to step up and make sure that they provide the services that the vulnerable members of this community need. Um, just a few more remarks for me. Um, Affordable Care Act requires a nonprofit hospital to do a community health needs assessment and adopt an implementation, implementation strategy to address needs identified in order to keep the tax exempt status. Based on the community health needs assessment done in 2022, North Memorial's top two community health priorities for 2023 to 2025 are racial disparities in health and life impact in trauma. Its website lists some of the issues with the racial disparities, including lack of access to or delay care, especially for mental health, and higher infant mortality rates in Black, Hispanic, and American Indian populations. He also lists growing up in a family in, uh, with the mental health issues as adverse childhood experiences that affect patients. While North Memorial has an implementation plan for those priorities, None of them address an issue of community access to care. How can North Memorial executives claim that they care about the community when they have chosen to cut NICU and mental health care as central services to the community based on assessments? The recent decision has um, actually increased the very issues that they claim to as priorities. Lastly, we demand transparency in North Memorial's financial status. Mr. Sawalish has stated that their financial status is due to a decrease in reimbursement with increased number of patients covered by governmental sponsored plans. He has said the loss of Hennepin County funding was also a factor. NICU and mental health services are both resource heavy and low in reimbursement and it is clear the reduction in these services is a financial decision. North Memorial has not been transparent with the spending. What would it take to not lose access to these essential services? Are they truly due to the reason they stated? Or is the community we serve being deprived of essential services in interest of pursuing growth expansion and more profit? Why do North Memorial needs taxpayers' money to care for those in need when he has a lucrative yet still tax-exempt counterpart to Maple Grove? Can we truly meet the community needs with the corporate model of healthcare? Until North Memorial's book is open, we nurses of um, Minnesota Nurses Association oppose even a single cut that will take away from community needs. Thank you. Any questions? To your knowledge, is, is, is anyone at North Memorial given the patients uh, uh, an avenue to go down once once the mental health service unit closes? I mean, are, are patients given an option for, the, for their continuing care? Um, outpatient services, um, they they said that they're doing so, but um, not not to the detail of what's going on. I'm not aware of that. I can speak to that okay. and um, go ahead. I'm just the mic for more. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I was kind of told by my provider um, that when it came to August, 
I could try and follow him to his new location. Um, I could see a different facility. Um, they're really, they're really not providing any concrete um, continuity of care and making the transition easy. It's, you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to start the process over, find a new psychiatrist, wait, get in, and try and develop that rapport with. A new individual and luckily I you know have resources and I'm able to get myself to different locations and look into these other options and some people don't have that and this added obstacle of having to find a new clinic might be just enough of a you know hurdle for them to stop receiving care so it ain't right I have a question for anybody that would like to take it. This seems like something that you'd hear about maybe in rural areas with services and hospitals coming down. Uh, this is right in the middle of the most populous area. Uh, does anybody want to weigh in on what's up with that? What's, what can you possibly make of that? And do the rest of us also need to be worried or are we okay? You know what I'm saying? That's why we're here to uh, alert the community what's going on at North Memorial. It just from our experience of working in ED or ICU or any med, med surge area, um, we, we do take care of a quite a large population of um, patients with the mental health needs. And we often, like I said in that statement, we often take care of them in a non-psychiatric area until they can go to the, the right place. And that, um, so I, you know, although they North has claimed that their census has been would decrease, actually right sizing that unit. That's what they said. They are trying to make it um, 18 has been that average number of patients they had for a long time. Um, but from the record that psychiatric unit keep, it, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, so I'm. I don't know why they're making this cuts, and it seems that it's purely financial decision, and they have claimed that it is because of the money. So, um, but we don't feel that this is the right decision for the community, and that's why we're here. I'm sorry if I missed this earlier. Was there a number given of how many how many nurses are actually being laid off due to these closures? Uh, we uh, so we have 26 um, nurses from NICU um, who are going to be laid off and I think about four of them might be taking a position here but the rest either retiring or going elsewhere. Any other questions? Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.